hello dear students today we will be discussing about the measurement of or determination of ph curve and stresses so before moving on to the ph curve we will be looking at uh, what uh, the measurement of ph curve and uh, first we will look at uh, the hysteresis loop or the ph curve now you all know that hysteresis loop is a four quadrant ph graph from where different uh, parameters are being identified and the hysteresis is the property of the material by which the flux density is lagging behind the magnetizing force so you have a flux density b and you have the magnetizing force h so uh, the uh, even when your h is reduced to zero mm, that is at this at this particular point your h is zero but still you have some magnetizing force similarly at each point your magnetizing flux density or the flux density is lagging behind the magnetizing force this is a property is known as the uh, hysteresis now uh, coercive force is defined as the negative value of magnetizing force which is required to bring the uh, this flux whatever the flux it is available at zero uh, current or zero magnetizing force to zero okay now uh, we have some term known as residual flux density or residual magnetism so that is the flux density that is available or the magnetism that is uh, retained by the magnet even after your h is zero so that uh, magnetism is known as residual magnetism and the pr property is known as retentivity and if you need to bring this flux to zero you have to apply some force in the reverse direction or in negative direction so you apply some force in negative direction you can bring your flux density to zero and that that magnetism is known as your um, coercive force the force that you apply now what is the importance of this uh, hysteresis loop hysteresis loop gives the uh, or the area gives the hysteresis loss okay which is a part of the iron loss okay. so you can uh, find out the hysteresis loss uh, from the hysteresis loop area so if you are a larger area your hysteresis loss also will be larger it also provides the value of retentivity coercivity of the material and from the ph graph we are able to find out the um, procedural magnetism which can be helpful in uh, choosing the magnets uh, materials for electromagnets so these are some of the applications or importance of this is this loop now how 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 can you say that there is energy loss during this entire process so in uh, especially in transformers during magnetization and demagnetization that is if you are applying ac signal your uh, your material will be magnetized as well as demagnetized you will have force applied in one direction then the uh, force will be reversed in the other direction the opposite direction so during this process of magnetization and demagnetization some energy is being expended now what happens you will have some uh, magnetic dipoles so in the unmagnetized state at this point here this is your dipoles so your dipoles will be aligned in, in random fashion once you apply the force your dipole starts aligning okay and once you increase the force more and more dipoles will be aligning and ultimately you will reach a saturation point where no more dipoles are yet get to align almost all the dipoles are aligning in this direction and you are getting maximum uh, flux density at this point even if you increase the h magnetizing force beyond this value beyond the, this particular value you will not have an increase in uh, b so that is known as saturation so you have reached the saturation you have all the dipoles aligned now once you reduce the value of magnetic energy, that is during your sinusoidal wave you have reached the maximum value then you are reducing it to minimum value so during that process what happens so this is from 0 to I am calling it as A so you have reached A now from A to B you are moving so from A to B once you move from A to B you will reach this value this is the point B. Okay. Now, once you move like this, what happens? Mm -hmm. Some of the alignment will be lost because we are having reduction in the force. So, some of these 
and dipoles will be getting real. Retains the magnetization and uh, so some magnetization will be still left in this in this process. So uh, this particular property is known as magnetic inertia where uh, even if your applied force is removed you have some dipoles still aligning in the original direction so due to this magnetic inertia you will have some flux density available even if your h is reduced to zero so this property is known as uh, retentivity hmm? that is you are retaining some magnetization for magnetizing uh, magnetic flux density or magnetization even if your force is removed and once you uh, so in order to bring the dipoles to original state where you have started this this is original state so if you need to bring the dipoles to original state you have to further apply some force in the reverse direction okay so you have to apply some force in the reverse, reverse direction then only you are able to bring the uh, flux density to zero so that extra force that is applied is uh, already we have told this is known as the coercive force Okay. So once you apply that extra force, we are able to bring all the dipoles to the original state and your magnetization to zero. Once you so during that process, you will be reaching up to this value. So this is your point C. Okay. Then again, you you will continue. You will reach the peak value, and you will get the whole graph. Okay. And we will come back to uh, we will come back to a new 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 path and. Uh, you will get the new curve. So uh, your whole curve will be something like this. So you, uh, from in an un unmagnetized state, you will start from this point. You will reach the saturation. You will move, move like this. You will reach a negative saturation or negative peak. Mm -hmm. okay. So you will not be following the this original path again. Okay, so this is, this is only for the first time. After that, you are not following this path. You will be getting this loop. Okay? Because of these properties, you will be getting this loop. So for this loop will be followed, or this will be repeated for each cycle. So this is for a single cycle. For each cycle, this loop will be repeated. So at each cycle, uh, the energy will be spent to change the direction of these dipoles or alignment of these dipoles. So that energy is known as the stress is uh, the energy that is lost is known as stress is loss. Okay, so the energy loss per unit volume of the substance is given the area of the stress curve. Okay, so hope that is uh, clear. Now for different materials, we will have different uh, uh, nature of stress curve. So uh, in some of the materials here, this, this curve is larger, so that uh, here you can see that it is having higher retentivity. It retains larger fraction of magnetization even when your uh, force is removed. So this, these are desirable for permanent magnets and uh, magnetic recordings, etc. Then you have another case where your uh, your area is reduced as well as your uh, retentivity is also reduced. Here you can see that your uh, this is loop area is very minimal also the uh, the flexibility that is retained is also very small so these are desirable for uh, transformers machines like transformers and motor force so that your energy loss can be minimized okay and still it retains some magnetic flux in the beginning even if your mag entire magnetization is removed so such such type of um, make, um, curve can be used in such applications like in transformer course, course as well as motor course. Understand how the flux can be determined using ballistic galvanometer or ballistic method. So uh, we are taking a ring specimen for the this particular experiment. So ring, ring specimens are chosen because they give continuous piece of magnetic material without air gap and have same cross section throughout and the difficulty is that they are uh, more difficult to prepare than 
bar specimens and also more difficult to wind the magnetizing winding but they are preferred over the other type of specimens now the connection diagram is shown as in figure so the ring specimen um, specimen is magnetized using this circuit so you have, you will have some magnetizing current i flowing through the magnetizing winding which is uniformly wound over this specimen and uh, the supply is being provided uh, with the help of a battery b mm. and you have some variable resistance r dash also provided to adjust the current that is flowing through this magnetizing winding now a search coil is also provided here search coil will be identifying any flux change that is happening in this magnetizing coil so that is search coil is connected to the ball ballistic galvanometer and you are also provided with the key and a calibrating coil and res resistance R is also provided in order to adjust the current here and um, what happens is that uh, the current I can be controlled using this rheostat and you have some reversal switch also given that is once, once the switch is connected to this B with the connector connection like this ok and once and once if you once you connect it here to a dash your connection will be like this okay so you can reverse the connections uh, by shifting the switch so you'll be reversing the connections and you'll be seeing the flux change now let phi be the flux produced in this magnetizing coil of, uh, due to current of i amperes and uh, you will be reversing the uh, you will be using this reverse switch to reverse the directions so once you reverse the direction that is you are having some i current flowing so because of that some plus phi will be produced and once you reverse the switch what happens in this circuit you will have minus i flow so because of that you will have minus phi produced so the uh, rate of change of flux will be given by phi minus minus phi divided by t is the total time taken that is say, okay and the average EMF induced in the search coil is m d phi by dt that is n into 2 pi by t current flowing through the various galvanometer circuit you are uh, seeing that your key is open key is not used now will be used in the next next experiment only. so the current flowing in the ballistic galvanometer is um, this average EMF divided by the resistance of the ballistic galvanometer circuit so we are assuming that r is the total resistance net resistance in the ballistic galvanometer circuit and the quantity of electricity discharged into the this parti particular ballistic circuit is given by q is equal to n into 2 phi by r t into t so that will be 2 n phi by r so the quantity of electricity discharge to the galvanometer in terms of deflection is given by q equal to k into theta where k is the ballistic galvanometer constant mm, not the key it is a ballistic galvanometer constant and theta 1 is the first deflection that you that you obtain first deflection that you obtain so you have number of oscillations so theta 1 will be the first oscillation or first deflection that you have and when you compare 1 and 2 you will have phi which is the flux equal will be proportional to theta 1 ok so this is how you measure the flux and once you get the flux you can calculate flux density by simply dividing with the area of cross section of the ring specimen that is taken so in, in that way you are able to identify the, and identify the flux density Now we will look at the determination of BH curve using the first method which is the method of reversal. So here we are using the same circuit that we have seen earlier. So you are using a ring, ring, ring shaped specimen and you are uh, having a thin layer of uh, tape put over it initially and then you are winding the um, search coil and above the search coil the magnetization winding is uniformly bound. So this is the expected BH curve from this. So this is your BH curve. You are starting from zero okay by starting from zero and then you move up and you reach the saturation now first what we do is that we will be removing the residual magnets or the process is known as demagnetization so already the specimen will be having some magnetization or some residual magnetism okay so first you need to remove this residual magnetism so once you do that then we will start you need to start from this point so in order to do that you have to remove the residual magnetism first. 
so what happens is what what we do is that we will be closing the switch k hmm? this k will be closed so that your dielectric galvanometer circuit is cut off then your magnetizing winding is energized from this particular circuit and uh, you are you are applying very uh, a large current hmm? larger than the uh, current that you generally use for the particular experiment a large value of current so you are increasing the value of current and then you uh, the current then you reduce the current gradually to zero or uh, h2 h2 zero h is given by ni by l there is a number of turns l is the active length of the conductor that is here and i is the current so this these two are constants once you wind it hmm? once you do the winding n and l are constant the only variable is i so with the variation in i your h also varies so you reduce the current your h also gets reduced so current is gradually reduced to zero and the reverse switch is also uh, applied so once you apply the reverse switch what happens suddenly your current is reduced from positive to negative and negative to positive this shift is happening so in, do, in the process what happens is that the specimen is passed through cycles of nine hundred session mm. slowly the uh, current is reduced and the cycles of nine hundred sessions continue and slowly you are bringing the uh, nine, the area of the this is the minimum and uh, after, uh, while you continue with the process by reducing the current and reversing the switch uh, your residual magnetism is slowly reduced to zero so this this happens also if you apply an ac here you are not applying ac so that's why you are having a switch if you apply the ac and you reduce the value of current if you are able to reduce the value of current by applying the ac automatically your uh, this is curve will be reduced to zero because you are uh, after each cycle you are having lesser force available so slowly your curve will be reduced to zero so you reach this this particular point so once you reach that what happens your test is started by setting a magnetizing current to some particular value mm -hmm. so you set a magnetizing current here okay and at this point x1 and you need to get b1 Hmm. Corresponding to H1, you need to get B1 in order to plot this particular curve. Now, uh, uh, with the key to key K closed, K is still closed, and the ion specimen is brought to a reproducible cycle of magnetizing state. Hmm. That is, uh, by throwing this reverse reverse switch back and forth about 20 times, you are again bringing this particular man, particular uh, uh, specimen to magnetization state, and uh, after throwing the switch to about 20 times, 20 times in the sense you will have some uh, uh, flux density corresponding to H being created at that particular during this process. Already you will have some flux density created corresponding to this particular H. So once you do that what happens? After that your uh, K is open and the value of H is, uh, uh, K is open. Once the K is open what happens? You will have a, uh, that flux being measured by the ballistic galvanometer and uh, H can also be identified so corresponding to H1 your B1 can be identified and uh, from the throw of the ballistic galvanometer as soon as the K is closed there will be a change in the ballistic galvanometer reading so that reading is identified and that gives you the uh, value of flux and flux density can be calculated now uh, uh, once you calculate the flux density you get uh, one point you get one point B1 and corresponding H1. Mm. So you, the process is repeated for different values of H up to the maximum testing point and you get uh, the different points H2, B2 and similarly you will get different points and you can plot this particular curve. So in this way you are able to identify the or you are able to draw the BH curve. The same BH curve also can be drawn using step by step method. The only thing is that instead of uh, reverse switch you are having a potential divider so initially uh, with, the, with the setup similar to this and after demagnetization mm, after demagnetization mm, what happens is that your uh, tappings here you, you will have number of tappings in the potential divider so this switch S2 is set to 1 so your circuit will be something like this once, S, once S2 is set to 1 S1 is closed so you have a DC power supply here and once S1 is closed your circuit will be like this through the ammeter you are able to identify the current and uh, into the specimen and then 
I'll pop this person in. And to the DC supply. So once your uh, switch, switch is at point 0.1, you'll have the entire resistance of the potential divider in the circuit. So you'll have minimum value of current initially. So once you uh, open the key, key, okay, key is opened and you find out the throw of ballistic galvanometer. So that corresponds to H1 and B1. Now what happens? Once you change your switch to S2, S2 is changed to 0.2. Once you change to 0.2, your current increases to corresponding to H2. So here you have I1, here you have I2 and correspondingly you will be getting H2. Now once you move to H2, what happens? You will have the corresponding change in flux. So initially your flux was phi1, now you will be getting another flux which is phi2. So the total flux at this corresponding to B2 will be phi1 plus phi2 because this because this because this uh, ballistic galvanometer item so you are changing so you are changing flux is phi2 during this shift mm. so early, earlier you had identified phi1 so phi1 plus phi2 divided by area gives the flux density b2 ok so in this in this process in this way you will uh, you can move up to the uh, maximum stud that is available and uh, you can get different values of h2 and h and b and you can complete your uh, particular curve that is the ph curve so in this way uh, this is another method of, uh, by which you are trying to find out the ph curve of magnetic material using step by step method so thank you so much